College and I took over from another Dave. So there's been Daves in outdoor ed for nearly two decades. Um, thank you for coming and taking an active interest in your education or your son or daughter's education. And I would like to respectfully acknowledge the local custodians of this land, the Aranda people, and give um, thanks to elders past, present and emerging um, for the ability to live, work and educate uh, in Mbantua. All right, here for year 11, uh, Aspire. So there are a couple of things about Aspire. Now, it did used to be called leadership, but apparently not everyone wanted to be a leader, so we had to change it to Aspire. So the Year 11 leadership course, as it was known for 20-odd um, years, turned into the Year 11 Aspire course. We were also having an Aspire program at the college, so um, and it's a little bit confusing with the Aspire program at CDU, I understand, but... We're on Year 11 Aspire. There might be some references to Year 11 leadership, uh, like in the video. Um, one of the key focuses is the ability to lead, not within the college, but as a person. Having a go at stepping up, working on your individual ability to lead in front of your peers. So it's one of the main focuses within that. However, it's fitting under Aspire. So tonight, We'll have a look at the Aspire program. It's sneaking up into the curtains. Some of the objectives. We'll have a look at a film and I'll start talking over there instead of over here. Hopefully people can hear. If you can't hear, I can plug in a microphone and I can be much louder, um, but that's probably loud enough at the moment. We'll talk about some of the equipment and clothing because we are starting to get to the point um, at times where we're dunking your sons or daughters in and out of freezing cold water repeatedly and then having wind and no sun inside a gorge um, and white fluffy stuff can sometimes fall from the sky and then they'll be wet the next morning and they might be able to freeze because it does get down to minus two sometimes in those gorges. Um, so it's very important that we're prepped for that sort of stuff. Um, as it is about medical consent and then obviously a bit of a free-for-all on questions. Um, I'll take questions about the course or pretty much anything really. Um, we might not record all of it though. So Year 11 Aspire. We are basically at that sort of culmination, like this is the high point of outdoor education and the sort of experiential education within the college. So. Students have been having a go in year seven, it was three days. In year eight, it was five days. In year nine, it was nine days. Last year, if we went to Mitigundi, it was 11 days, but it only really counts as nine because two of those days were on the bus and the plane. So, um, and now we're out there for 10 days and nine nights. So it's a lot of time for young people to spend with each other. Sometimes they'll be friends at the start and hopefully they'll be friends at the end. Sometimes they might not be friends at the start and maybe they'll be more likely to talk to each other at the end. Um, by about day six, you probably will not be able to stand a few people in the group and you'll be ready for a little break and you'll go on to something that's called solo and we'll unpack that a little bit later. And it gives you a little bit of a chance to reset, take a deep breath and go, Phew, that was intense. I've just been 24-7 for six days with all of my peers and I'm ready for a break and actually I'm going to sleep for 36 hours. So we're at the top, at the high point. We're sort of working, we've been working towards this. On year seven, we did an abseil that really wasn't very high. It was about six metres off the ground. On year nine, we did an abseil that was about 25 metres and on year 11, we get the opportunity to do an abseil that's about 30 metres and you have to wear a wetsuit with a life jacket on, possibly a rain jacket if it's really cold, with woolen jumper, beanie, maybe a double beanie, maybe even socks on your hands because you don't have any gloves um, and a helmet. And then you go down the abseil and you land in the water and then your backpack comes tumbling down the cliff after you with two other backpacks attached to each other. And hopefully the instructor didn't manage to get that stuck on the abseil line because that really does prolong the experience. And then if you made it to the bottom, you'll be down there 
almost passing out from blowing up your lilo, and then you'll get into the freezing cold water if you hadn't landed in it by mistake as, uh, at the bottom of the abseil, and then the dunking begins. So there are a range of things that are going to happen, and we've been working up to this experience. Some people probably think, and they think back, as like, oh, my God. Year nine, there was so much walking. I can't handle any more walking. Well, the average amount of walking, I think, if you average it out, is about five kilometres a day. So it's not that far. And two of those days, you're pretty much, you don't move anywhere. Um, and then, obviously, you know, the first half day, you're probably not walking anywhere because you're getting your stuff organised and getting there on a bus. And so, really, the walking is really not a huge part of this. Instead, the focus is around all of those um, aspects. So we're talking about leadership, communication, self-reflection, and focusing on the environment as well. I'm probably going to jump around a little bit because I'm a little bit passionate about this program, and I tend not to be able to look at my slides at the same time as talking about them, but I'll use them for a prompt here and there. There is a high level of adventure, but it's not going to be crazy. Um, to the point where you can't actually keep up or make it. If you can walk around the college and you can sort of do things on a daily basis and you play a little bit of sport, you will be able to survive um, this program. So it is probably as mentally challenging as it is physically challenging. So this is sort of what it looks like. So this is how we sort of summarize our programs. Um, and it does get a little bit more complicated than that because the spreadsheet goes for pages and pages and pages and then it multiplies by groups and then it accounts for food and does all of these complex things. But you'll notice, like, if we have a look, the number one, two, three relates to a day. So as we go through, we're in the shed at 8 a.m. on the bus by 9.30. So we actually don't spend a heap of time prepping in the shed because you've already got used to packing stuff into a backpack because you've been on Year 8, you've been on Mitigundi, um, and you've been on Year 9. So we're expecting it to be really streamlined because we will have had this pre-trip meeting beforehand and you will have actually like, you'll know that you've got a wetsuit that fits, you'll have a life jacket that fits and it's probably pre-allocated. So you'll be, basically, we're charging, we're organised, you are directing your learning as a student. So we're heading, and this is group one, obviously, and they'll be going through to gauging station by the end of the day. The number three relates to the number of potable water drums that you will have, which is town potable water. Sometimes you'll have more surface water, but ultimately in your small group, you'll have access to those water drums. You'll notice by the time we get to day three, no water drums. Oh, that's all right. Hopefully, Sally, we'll be able to, um, you'll be able to hear enough. And when we zoom in, um, yeah, so that is, uh, yeah, there's a lot of information, Sally. I'm going to send the slides out. Um, <laughs> all right. You will get the slides and there will be hopefully a copy of this recording. So, First couple of days, we're doing some walking. We're moving through gauging station. Most of the students might have been to gauging station before. They move on to Savannah and then on to North Fringe Lily. So three days in, we're actually already at about day five for year nine. So the year nines really don't walk very far at all. Those first two days for year 11, they're going to be tough ones. So your backpack's on, you've got your lilo, you've got your wetsuit. You've got your life jacket, you're carrying your helmet, you haven't worn a backpack since you're on your nine. Maybe you did for a little bit of steam, but it's really different, isn't it? Let's face it, happy to Gundy, because you're on those two metre long skis, just going over everything, and the ground isn't very rough. So we're working into Fringe Lily, which we've been to before. It was before you went up over the Razorback. But we're going to keep going to the north out of Fringe Lily, and we're going to go all the way around to the back of Hugh Gorge. It will take us a couple of days more to get there. As a lead group, if you are on the M team, which is the management team or leadership for the next day, you might even duck in and have a little sneaky look at the massive boulders and stuff that you'll have to negotiate the next day before plunging down the abseil and getting your group down there. So, 
on a daily basis, other things that we sort of have a little bit of a look at, we have some goals that we might look at and students will be setting some short-term goals. And it's like, oh, not goals again. Um, short-term goals will be about the course. So they'll be around leadership, they'll be around communication, they'll be around your ability to self-reflect and they may even include some environmental goals. Well, an environmental goal might be that you are not going to leave fecal matter on the surface of the earth. You're going to bury it to an appropriate depth and location so that it doesn't come out of the riverbed and float down towards another campsite. Those sorts of things might be things that you might have in there for your, um, you might try not to trample on native vegetation. You know, not picking vegetation, sticking to form paths. We're very lucky that we travel through the gorges and we're actually, it's a lot like walking across these chairs in many locations. You kind of like have to step on from rock to rock and you actually don't crush a whole bunch of vegetation because it's actually pre-hardened by nature because it's devoid of vegetation. So we are lucky in many aspects. But there are areas where we do have to be a little bit more careful um, and we want to make sure that we're setting some goals around that. We do have some communications talks and daily you'll have some self-reflection time. So on a daily basis that will build up. The time that you have to self-reflect will build up on a daily basis. So the first day you might only get 15 to 20 minutes of like, Oh, let me just step back, like what have I got myself into, this is a little bit scary and you'll have a personal journal for yourself to re record all of your thoughts, emotions and things like that. Now I know some people are not great at recording these things but they're great at making them happen in your head and but you might be required to come back and talk about some of the things that you have like short or medium term goals. A medium term goal might actually include, I actually don't want to be a leader or I do want to be a leader. Actually, I want to be school captain. And you'll have some time to reflect on that in that journey. So year 11 used to be at the start of term three and it actually swapped in on the calendar with year nine because the year 11 students, when they went at the start of term three, were coming off year 11 and then a week or two weeks later, they are expected to apply for college captain positions. So they only had two weeks post year 11. This way, it's also a bit unfortunate because all the energy from year 11 goes into the school holidays, but you have more time to reflect on whether or not you would like to take on a leadership role within the college. So there are trade-offs. Um, it's also good that it's after the Fink weekend and it sort of takes you right up to the holidays. It's like having six weeks off really, isn't it? Um, so we're working through, we get into the gorge, we spend, it actually, the gorge day is about one and a half kilometres from start to finish, but it will take half a day to get through the gorge because it is complex. You can't just plonk your backpack on and just like, yep, I'm going, I'm going through the gorge, oh, one and a half days, I'll be done in 10 minutes. You can't just flood it out and get through there. The gorge day involves, you know, a bit of a climb, getting up to the top, coming down, possibly wading through some water. There'll be like a first down climb, which would be on a belay. So that sort of process for 20 odd people actually takes nearly two hours to get you down your boulders with your backpacks and those sorts of things. We used to just like sort of, you know, sort of just do these ones but now we've got a rope in there because you know it's sort of been decided for a few years now that maybe that was a little bit too adventurous um, so now students are belayed down these heights which probably is quite good on reflection because every now and then people put their foot into a very wet puddle and then the wetness would go down the wall and then sand sticks to your shoes and it's sort of like it gets a little bit like um, Roadrunner as he's sort of like building up momentum and it's just not going anywhere and then as you like and then land in a large puddle of water, slimy water. Um, just before you sort of spend an hour or so waiting for people to get down the abseil you get a pre-dunking which wasn't really favourable for anybody. Um, so we're sort of working our way through and I'll break down some more of these aspects of the program. It's just it is very structured. So 
I know when I look at this, like the bottom line, I know you won't be able to read, but it says BYO, that's lunch. So you BYO lunch on the first day. And then there's number one, and for your first food drop, that covers spaghetti bolognese, hot chocolate, standard breakfast one, peanuts and sultanas, and a standard lunch one. So, and then on the second day, there's another one. It's like pesto, choc ripple biscuit cake, standard breakfast, peanuts and sultanas, and then standard lunch again. And then because we're going through the gorge, we're carrying like Mexican chili rice and hot chocolate with muesli bars because we're in a gorge and you need those quick snacks for when you're in the gorge because you might, you don't know when you're going to get to eat if you're wearing a wetsuit sometimes. So you have to tuck one in um, and use it at will. So it is exciting, it is complex, and um, it does go on. I probably won't break down everything, but oh, there's souvlaki, there's solo solo, um, there's a whole bunch of things happening. So on a daily basis, and it will make a little bit more sense once we sort of get into these educational um, objectives, but we do have a look at the dynamics of leadership. So first day, the two staff members will be leading the day and they'll set an example for the students to follow. At the end of the first day, two or three people will actually be chosen to be the management team for the next day. And it sort of works like that on a daily basis. So students are actually responsible for navigation, for waking everyone up, for helping organise the kitchen, um, making sure that we're going the right way. I may or may not have followed one of my groups for about five kilometres in the wrong direction because I thought it was a valuable teaching aid. Might have had a little chuckle. They weren't very um, happy with the fact that I'd let them go the wrong way. But um, that's the sort of thing that can happen because if you're just like plonking along and not really paying attention to your specific role within the group, um, maybe there's a trade-off and it's quite good for your the rest of your group to sort of maybe nearly lynch you and then you'll pay more attention in the coming days about your navigation. So, leadership. We'll have a look at some of the styles, some of the bonuses. Can we be autocratic? You're like, all right, you guys, like, pack up all those chairs, get over there. All right, we're moving from here to here. We're going to take this long. Can we be really autocratic and just boss everyone around the whole time? It's not going to work as a leader. Can we sort of like, oh, I don't know. What do you guys want to do? I think we should go this way. What do you guys think? Who wants to go this way? Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. And then everyone sort of floats around and there'll be different styles and we'll have a look at those different styles and maybe even acknowledge some times where it's important to be like, right, get moving, get up, those sorts of things. So that we can start to think about, am I just going to get all of my peers offside and they're just going to want to poke me in the eyeball with sticks? Or do they really just need a little bit of a kick to get out of bed so that we can get this show on the road and we're not sort of walking at 10 o'clock at night? So we have leadership and everybody will be aware of those responsibilities. Depending on what day it is, it may or may not have some complexities. So if you are leading on the day where you're going through a gorge, it's going to be really physical. So some of the people that are leaders that are really active, like they maybe, you know, like lifting heavy things, they might be on those days where there is a high involvement area. And in the gorge, students are expected not to sort of go off anything that's above chest height, basically, but still there's spotting involved, there's backpacks lifting. In times in the gorge, literally everyone's feet are planted in a massive long line, Backpack goes from there to there. Backpack goes from there to there. It's like a massive pass along of equipment and it does take a while. If we're in a really firmly planted position, we can pass our packs and stuff like that. If we're walking without sort of wet shoes and sandy shoes, it gets more complicated to be able to walk with a heavy load, particularly if we've dunked it in the water and things like that. So we have to work together. Some groups on their days, the management team might actually have to help structure some of the communication talks. And there's two communication talks that happen throughout the 10 days and you can't actually study for the communication talks, but 
there is an expectation that you will present to your peers and one sort of is about from three to five minutes and one could be 10 to 15 minutes, which is a little bit scary talking for that period of time. Personally, I don't have too much of an issue with that those these days because I've been training myself for decades now to talk for long periods of time. Um, but it will be a challenge. Luckily, it's all about you and what you think and what you believe in. And it depends on the leader of the group, but the first one will be a little bit less confronting. It might be a little bit more superficial. It might be, you know, describe a scar story just or using an emotional or a physical scar. You could unpack that however you like and you'll have a couple of days to get ready for that communication talk. In the communication talk, there is an expectation that you would listen to other people and they will listen to you. And consider the environment. Have, do I have everyone sitting down in 30 degrees in the blazing sun after not drinking any water and walking for a really long time and they're all really uncomfortable or we're sitting on an ant nest and I'm standing with the sun behind my head? Do we have to consider those sorts of things? And so we will take into account the way you present, whether you need a prop, whether you need sunscreen on, whether everybody is receptive to being communicated to and with. We don't just sit down with like our, you know, 14 to 18 students and just go, all right, we're all doing a two to three minute talk now and then we sit there for two hours. Because that would be, I mean, I'd be sort of, you know, pulling my own fingernails out probably if I had to sit through that many as a staff member. So I can't imagine what you guys would be doing as a student. So the person on that management day has to structure it. It's like, well, let's say we walk for an hour and then when we have a break, instead of just collapsing and like sort of doing it, maybe we do two or three while we're having that break. So it's using opportunities and using the day and the activities to the best of advantage because you don't want to get into this scenario where you're just doing a massive talk fest and no one's really engaged in what's happening. So you could be in some demanding situations. It could be the navigation. Some days are quite challenging for navigation. Some days are quite complex on a management level because they're giving um, comms talks. Some days are complicated because um, maybe it's a difficult meal to cook. Um, maybe you're going through a complex space. And this little space here, you can see that the students are all lined up and they're literally passing pack one at a time through the whole conga line to get through these large boulders. And it's right at the top of Hugh Gorge, just before they go down the first, um, yeah, the first lower on a rope. I'm trying to find my mouse, but hopefully it's sort of just over the edge of that precipice there. And then it goes around the corner for a little bit before you commit to the full abseil. So it's a pretty fun piece of terrain in there. Communication skills. I've touched on them a little bit, but we have these two comms talks and they're spread out. So one of them will happen before you go into the gorge, probably before you actually go through Hugh Gorge, probably after you've been through Fringe Lily Gorge, and then one of them will be after solo. So you would have a bit of time on solo to be able to write and prepare for your comms talk. So it's not just like 10 minutes, go, talk about self. So there are daily themes that happen on a daily basis. So it could be around leadership. It's probably going to be around a large percentage of the focus, leadership, self-reflection, communication, the environment, those sorts of themes on a daily basis. It goes a little bit further. The day before we go and do the abseil, there might be a theme that's around fears and barriers. So the things that stop people from having a go at stuff. Um, or the things that sort of just prevent them, maybe sort of keep them closed in a little bit. And one of the strategies we put in place to reduce that fear or that barrier of abseiling, because it's not uncommon for year 11 students to have avoided year 7 abseil, avoided year 9 abseil, maybe not done outdoor ed as an elective, so they've avoided abseiling in class or rock climbing to get to the edge of the abseil and decide, no, nah, no, nah, not doing that. So we have a practice before we go out there. 
and it'll probably be here. I think it's week four. I'm sure it's in my notes. I haven't like committed that to memory. I'll talk about it later. But there are some practice abseils where you get a chance to just abseil on the school wall while it's a little bit, it feels a little bit safer in the urban environment. And then you'll find that when you get to the actual abseil, you're like, oh yeah, I've been in one of these harnesses. I've held onto a rope. The staff members got me on the rope. This is no longer, the barrier is no longer around the abseiling activity because you've been prepared for it. Um, and it's actually where I think 15% of the marks under the NTCE, the SACE subject, go towards the abseil by attending the practice one and then being able to reflect on what that's like and imagining if you didn't practice, what might happen. So the first time I came up here in 2003 to go on year 11 program, I've been involved for a little while now, um, I ended up having something that resembled a hostage scenario at the top of the abseil and the student had never abseiled, she hadn't done year 7, she hadn't done year 9 um, and had no intention of going down said abseil, however it is the only way that we're going and we sort of had this confrontation for about 45 minutes to the point where we had to get to the point where I connected a very short rope to said student and started walking off the abseil down into the gorge and there was a little bit of kicking and screaming but nobody was harmed um, beyond the, yeah, anyway, there's probably some flow on effects from that as well. But now we have a practice, um, but staff are... And last year, I think some people actually had to practice like six or seven times before they actually went down the abseil at school. So you can imagine that it was quite challenging when they were out there as well. They came six or seven times before actually going down the practice abseil. Um, so that may have looked a little bit like that scenario where they were actually tied on to the staff member and they had to abseil side by side as an assisted abseil because that's part of the journey. And we just have to, that's how we have to get down. Um, so they did go down the abseil first with the instructor that went down the bottom first and it was all over and she was fine. Who would have thought? No screaming. Everything was all right. Daily, we'll talk about the themes. We'll talk about what we've reflected on. Um, and at the end of each day, once you get to the end of the day, it's not sort of like, that sucked, that sucked, your leadership was crap. It's more like, what did we do? What, what could be improved? Like what were some things that could be improved? And you'll get to say this to the staff on the first day as well. Like what do you think could be improved? Oh, it would have been good if you actually told us to bring our lunch. You know, those sorts of things. Because um, you bring lunch on the first day. So <clears throat> um, there's some feedback that is, it's more constructive. So, and that's recorded in a group journal, um, which is part of that communication. So on a daily basis, if you're on M team on the second day, that's probably a good time to go because that's when you'll get the most slack but the most learning will probably happen in those first few days as students are actually going on to that management team. So at the end of each day, what did we do well? What could be improved? And surely by the time you get to the end of five or six days, there's probably not going to be a lot to be improved on and we're going to be going pretty well. Some students that go earlier on in the leadership model and they have a practice on that first or second day are like, I can't believe it. I've learned so much over those next few days. I feel ripped off that I went on the second day. Um, I'd like to have another go. So there might be another opportunity to come back after you've learnt and gained the knowledge about what it looks like and how it all works to, after solo to have another go in those that next two days. So it's very exciting. Um, communication is obviously very important and making sure that everybody understands what's going on um, for your group is very important too. All right, I'm going to stop talking here and start talking over there for a bit and have a drink.
Oh, it's nice to have a little breather. Hopefully uh, you're ready to go again. Um, getting a little bit of a feel for what it looks like and what the course is like out there. Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> hopefully you're getting a bit of a feel for how we're going to be immersed into that environment. And, you know, you get exposed to some pretty amazing and very remote locations. Um, we are very lucky to be able to sort of participate and be out there in the West McDonald Ranges. And I guess we're going into some locations that people don't get to go heaps. We go over the Larapinta Trail and then keep going past it and then come around and cross over it for only brief periods of time. So we're actually in relatively uncharted territories. Although sometimes people sneak in there. I have found a snorkel and a mask once upon a time in Hugh Gorge. I'm not sure why anyone would have a snorkel and a mask in Hugh Gorge. Um, but somebody has. Somebody was expecting a very large flood, I think. One of those areas, so we've done, looked at leadership. We've had a little bit of a look at communication, self-reflection. Like time to have a look at who you are, where you fit, and where you're going to go effectively. So... We look at it on the lead, on the Aspire course in the college and then possibly have a look a little bit further down if we've got space to do so. Like the quiet time sort of starts somewhere in that vicinity on a daily basis. The self-reflection time is a time where students will have a campsite, probably got a few things set up around the camp and then students will head off in different directions and spend some time just chilling out and reflecting on the day's events. So they have a look at their goals, they'll have a think about what's working well, who they're hanging out with, maybe their comms talks, maybe the daily reflection. So there are a range of things to focus on while you're out there. And I don't pretend to think that everyone stays awake for that time all of the time, because you know it might start as about 25 minutes, but by the time you come out of the gorge, after abseiling into it on sort of day 
day six. Um, people are like, they're starting to get tired. They've been like waterlogged for the day in and out of these pools of water. They might have a quiet time that goes for about an hour and a half. And you just sort of like literally this bag of sort of prune type characters head off and they sort of do the, oh, oh my God, I'm so tired. I made it down the abseil. I've done all of these things and I've sort of faced maybe some fears that I wasn't expecting to, but God, I need a little break and they're sort of like, they get changed and they're <laughs> sort of like fall dead asleep for a couple of hours and then come back to the group. It's like, oh yes, what were we doing? And sometimes that is exactly what's needed, I suppose. And then other times students will actually fill their small journals from front to back and need backups, extras, hundreds of pages more, extra pens, all of those sorts of things. So sometimes part of that reflection might be to go away and actually do a nature observation in the place that you're in. You might actually write a poem. You might write a song, you might do a sketch, you might even use some charcoal from the fire pit and sort of get creative, maybe do something that's not just writing. Some people will reflect through pictures, so that would be okay too. Your personal journals are things that you effectively get to keep. They're not an accessible item. You might take some things from your personal journal, some excerpts, and they may be included in the body of your final assessment task, which is a reflection on the whole journey. But you know, you could have that small journal and it could be dead empty at the end and you would be the only person that knew. Otherwise, you might need extras. So it depends on the individual as to how you use that. It is a really useful tool to be able to have something to refer to. And I've still got some of my personal journals from taking some of those year 11 trips as well. So we have quiet times, we have personal journals, and we have a group journal. So a group journal is something that contains the day-to-day -day running. It might have navigation tips. It might have what the reflection periods are like. It might have the menu, the recipes, who's in the group, who's carrying the big spoon, because that can be a bit of an issue, finding the big spoon, who's got the sharp knives, who's got the can opener, um, those sorts of things. Because at the start, when you're at the shed, you'll probably get issued with something, and some of the groups that are very good at record keeping might actually write down, so that they know that the spoon is hidden underneath somebody's socks, um, or right down the bottom, or something like that. So chopping boards, you know, all of these things. All right, we're having lunch. Who's got the chopping boards? And everyone just saw, oh, who's got the chopping boards? Oh, well, we can't have lunch. We'll have to keep going until we get to dinner and empty everyone's packs out. So there'll be things like that within the group journal. The group journals are often, um, they're actually stored in my office. Um, and or they'll probably be moving down to the outdoor ed shed because there's more room in there than there is in my office. But there's decades of group journals kicking around and sometimes students come back and they'll have a look at them. When they're in year 12, they might, ah, we did this thing on year 11 Aspire. I can't quite remember what it was. It was really good activity. It was really well structured and it was written in the journal and I just need that piece of information. You could come back to the journal and write notes to groups later on. Um, we've had previous students that have gone on to become staff members who have come back and fondly looked through their group journal um, as a reflection tool. It's like, ah, oh, I don't want any of these like journals that you're talking about, Dave. Like, I want the one from my group because that's the experience that I had. Um, there's the 48 hour solo and that is a fair bit of time to do self-reflection. There will be some structure in there. Generally what happens is students sleep through the first 24 to 36 hours of that solo because they're a little bit tired from being with everybody else and just being out on program and in the environment for that period of time. It is not uncommon for students to put up their shelter, which is bright orange, um, once that's up, they get into their sleeping bag and they really don't move very far unless they have to go and dig a hole or maybe they have, you know, eat some breakfast, lunch or dinner, which may look very similar um, at each of those occasions. So um, there are many things that can happen out there. It might be a good time to do your reflective essay on the Aspire course so that you get those 10 credits. Um, 
for NTCE. So year 11 Aspire course, you can get the same number of credits for two terms of any other subject. 10 credits. So effectively, you could literally drop maths for a whole semester. Not that I'm like suggesting that's a good idea, but you could drop maths for a whole semester and do year 11 Aspire and have the same number of points towards your NTCE um, at the end. I don't think that's a good life goal, but um, it is a bonus. So clothing and equipment, we do harp on it a little bit. Um, it is a very extensive and comprehensive list. Um, there are many details. Hopefully when you a number of you have already ticked accepted in Opera, you actually printed out the equipment list and all those important dates and things like that because often what happens is we tick off Opera and then we can never find the form again um, and we don't have that equipment list. But it's lucky. It is available on Schoolbox. It's available on the website, whatever your platform um, or worst case scenario, it's probably been emailed out with the information night info as well. You'd probably be able to have a look there. So there are lots of locations where we could get it. Um, specialist equipment like wetsuits, ironically, we have over 100 wetsuits here in the desert at the college because we have had um, a significant number of people depending, not so much this year because year 11 is a bit of a smaller cohort, but we have had um, in the vicinity of 100 people wearing wetsuits on a year 11 program before, um, so we have a lot of wetsuits. If you have your own wetsuit though, you may wish to bring that, um, it's not uncommon for people to have wetsuits. Um, sometimes they're perished by the time we get them out. Um, wetsuits will be provided as is other specialist equipment. So, packed lunch on the first day, very important piece of information and equipment. It's on there. Um, we have a good relationship with Lone Dingo. They'll provide you with a discount. They um, will also help you out if you go in early. Um, lots of people have been on camp before though already and there's probably lots of experience, there's probably lots of equipment just in this room at the moment. Um, thousands of people have been on Aspire before, so the op shops are a very good source, friends, family, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, um, anybody could be around you. The boarding house is quite handy at having a little stash of things as well, so there are many locations and ways that we can access it. We can sort of help with a few things like every now and then someone dries their thermals a little bit close to the fire and suddenly the polypropylene goes up in smoke and they just burn a big hole or at least that's what they say in the bottom of their thermals. Um, I'm sure it's not for other reasons. Um, but every now and then thermals are lost in the drying process. Um, so we do have a small amount of equipment on site um, out there but obviously we don't just sort of have we're not a walking equipment shop so usually like yeah it's not uncommon for myself or Miss Shira to have to cough up their pants um, their spare pants and they sort of go out to a student and hopefully they don't split but every now and then someone's pants will split from ankle to ankle um, right up via and it turns into sort of a sarongi skirt type thing that's just attached around the ankles um, for a couple of days duct tape may be used so make sure that equipment's robust and it is of a nature that it can sort of withstand um, students stink filth dirt grime for a number of days you can probably get away with one pair of pants um, I'd be, you know, vouching for a few pairs of undies. Obviously, there's a couple of times where you'll be dunked in the water. A good time to wash a pair of undies or turn them inside out, back the front. I'm going to let you guys decide on that. Um, you'll also know about your sock habits, whether or not you can get multiple days of use out of socks. Um, personally, I can stick my shoes on at the, take my shoes off at the end of the day, stick my mouth up to my shoe, and it, it's not like I'm not going to throw up. Um, at the end of the day, that may not work for you. You may need more socks. Um, I do tend to wear woolen socks and they don't stink as much at the end of the day. And I do choose to wear woolen thermals. You can end up getting a few more days out of a good set of woolen thermals um, and they will probably bounce back into shape after a wash or um, some sort of yeah, biohazardous um, disposal unit at the end. Maybe through the wash is a good option. 
So dietary requirements, um, hopefully it's already in Operu, but if there's something extravagant and you really need to see the menu, um, we can just give you a copy of the menu plan, which has most of the ingredients in it, and you'll be able to work out whether or not um, your son or daughter can eat those things. So we're very understanding and we try to cope with everybody's needs. Um, <clears throat> as a student, Obviously, there's heaps for you to do on the program. And I don't know whether, you know, you were listening to what Ryan was saying earlier in the video, but there is a lot going on. And it's not necessarily about the walking or the enormity of the activities, but there's always something that relates to something later on. So there's always processing going on. There's always things that are happening or we're working towards. As a, as a group, you could get more sleep than you've ever had before in your life. You could literally get up with the sun and go to bed with the sun and have, you know, 12 hours of sleep a night. If you are organised, if you are only walking like, you know, 5Ks, sometimes maybe up to 8Ks in a day, the average student around the college probably walks somewhere about one to two kilometres an hour. So if, even if you're only walking one kilometre an hour, you're probably doing about five hours of walking. That's with stops and rests and toileting and all that sort of stuff. One kilometre an hour is going to be pretty slow, right? It's pretty much the model where you like take one step, catch up, take another step, catch up. I'm probably doing about a kilometre an hour at the moment. So students walking around the campus probably don't lift their feet very far, probably walk closer towards one and a half or two kilometres. If you walk with any purpose, like, oh, there's an obstacle, I can step across this and I just walk. Sometimes if you lean forwards a little bit, your momentum might build up as well. So you might find that that can aid you as you're going along. If you are really worried about the walking, there's a very comprehensive training program which starts with walking only a little way and it adds up and it suggests put a water bottle in a backpack and carry that. And then it might suggest, you know, 20 litre jerry can. No, it doesn't go to 20 litres. Um, but it does sort of offer the opportunity to do some walking. You might choose to walk the dog with your son or daughter for the next few months as um, a preparatory uh, process. Um, could be a bonding experience for everyone. Try new things. Um, make sure that you just have a go. And you could probably just go cold turkey without the preparation, like most of you will survive, but it will make it slightly less comfortable if you haven't walked in the walking shoes that you're going to be walking in. It will hurt. The backpack will feel like it's pushing like into your like into your shoulders back. It will feel like it's moulding you into it for the first few days. Your feet will be sore and you may have a blister. Hopefully you don't have any chafing, but you'll be uncomfortable for a couple of days. And then as you go, your body will start to get used to it by about day three. So it'll be a tough gig for the first couple of days. And then once you sort of get into the gorge, you've had a bit of a shower, you feel fresh, good time to sort of have a duck and a quick wash while you're in that first gorge because you won't be wearing the wetsuit. Wetsuit gets quite heavy when it's wet. Um, so you don't use that through fringe lily because you just go through, but you can have a little um, wash as you go through there. There is some surface water in other spots, but I haven't been out there yet this season, but often you might be exposed to some water at other times as well, um, which can sort of be a good thing. Be prepared, like being organised and respectful for yourself. So you do need to manage yourselves a little bit. Sometimes, like you could actually just like heat up a litre of water at the end of the day, have a face washer and just duck off to the toilet with your one litre water bottle. You can actually have a full bottle wash, which is a lot like a shower with a face washer and a bottle of warm water. And other people might get, get down with that as well. So there's like a large pot that will be in the group. You'll be able to heat stuff up. Surface water um, will be around. Maybe not every night, but that is an option that you might be able to think about. Um, some people are known for heating said water up and putting it in their Nalgene as a little hot hot water bottle. Can be quite nice as well at the end of the day. All these like creature comforts are things that you could do because you are functioning and embracing what's going on. 
Um, you are responsible for your own safety in a lot of ways. Obviously, when it comes to like an abseil or something, staff are going to be responsible for that safety. So the abseil is a top rope like you start at the top and there's a top rope top belay. So a staff member always has a second rope. So students go down one rope, they're in control of that. They've got a fair bit going on. So there's actually a second rope which a staff member will be controlling. And that will be the same when we have a practice here at the college um, so that we can operate safely out there. And there are obviously times where the staff member is going to be fairly hands on, but there are going to be times where the staff member might brief the group about how to move effectively through the gorge and then set up some parameters around what that looks like. Maybe sometimes, you know, a quiet chat during the middle of the day with the staff, it's just like, oh, you guys might think about going west about 90 degrees, like probably might be a good time to turn around a little bit if you're geographically embarrassed, not paying that much attention. Um, there could be a range of little checks in place. Following the college rules and having fun are also very important aspects. Um, there's always going to be a female staff member on program. Um, this is the rocket by now. Unless you're a new student, you've probably been exposed to the rocket on your seven, eight, nine. Mitigundi also have a rocket, so 10 and now into year 11. Um, there are some uh, extra sanitary items that are available on program, but there's not enough if the whole um, group decides to cycle at the same time. Um, that can be a bit catastrophic. Um, obviously, go on camp thinking that possibly, um, you know, I might get my period, I'm going to be prepared, would be my best advice. Um, it's better to be prepared than not to be. Medical information, um, it's important to be as up to date as possible. Um, completed in Operu in March because we're going in June um, and it gives us lots of time to get prepped and organised. If anything changes up until then, you'll be able to edit that stuff in Operu right up until the day before camp. Um, however, some of the printouts are going to happen before that for staff, so it would be great um, if something happens within like a week of camp and you change something in Operu, it's probably just worth saying, hey, I've just updated this thing, we're now on some complex medication for something. Um, it's probably worth just contacting outdoor education through the appropriate channels. Please make it as accurate as possible so that we can keep your young person going well out there. Did talk about the abseil practice a little bit earlier. Um, it is in there. It's on long break on the set days in Term 2, currently uh, the 7th to the 9th of May in Week 4. There's a pre-departure meeting which goes for a couple of hours, um, probably in that time where you guys have got some exams going on and things like that. Um, but it is quite important that you get to that as well because that's where you'll get issued with your personal journal, you'll sort out your wetsuit, you'll have your rain jacket, you'll have your life jacket, you'll have a helmet, um, you'll be sized up, your backpack will be there with your name on it so that it's a streamlined, efficient process right from the start from the minute you turn up and get ready to go on camp. You'll also meet your leaders at that time. So you'll get a bit of a feel and probably for the first time you'll actually process who's in your group, which could be a little bit scary for some of you. Most people get to that first time they meet their whole group en masse and you'll look around and go, oh my God, I don't know anyone, I'm gonna die. Um, some of you have already chosen buddies, so there's a good chance that you'll be with that buddy. Um, unless they've changed date on you. Um, some people haven't um, and that's okay too. I think less than 50% actually took the opportunity to get a buddy. Um, it's probably all right because maybe you'll change buddies or you wanted a different one or you can find your own one while you're out there. Um, there's plenty of buddy action and um, anyway, have a chat to Mishira or myself if you feel like you missed that or weren't paying attention for your buddy action. We talked a little bit about stage one before and I, when I was getting distracted, but 10 credits are available. Um, it's not very complicated. We're going to try and do a draft of our assignments while we're out there so you can come back and plug it in later. Um, we are sort of looking at trying to streamline that. If you go on camp, you're out there for 10 days, which is about the equivalent of 12 hours per day, 120 hours. It's more than enough time to justify a 
full semester of a year 11 subject. So we're very powerful in the outdoors. So you can see you'll be exposed to large amounts of land. Um, you might be able to see, I'm not sure, a small orange bivy in there. That's what a solo site sort of looks like um, out in the sun um, and with a shady tree somewhere nearby and a little bit of shade. But the solo sites go along rivers. Um, staff are out there checking them up to five times a day. So some important things, the pre-trip meeting, um, we have groups one and two on the Tuesday, which is the day after the King's birthday. Um, and then group three on the Wednesday, which is the day after that. Um, in Operu, the dates have already been allocated to your sons and daughters. So if you go back into Operu, you'll be able to see the specific one that relates to your um, son or daughter, hopefully, um, and take special note of that. Um, Please let us know very quickly if you think that, um, you know, somebody's in the wrong group or something like that. That would be great. Um, we also have a special edition uh, this year. We are offering an Adults Endeavour. So if you think that your son or daughter is having too much fun and going away and spending too much time out bush, you may choose to actually go out bush without them. So they might go on year 11 at the end of term two, you might decide to just sneak out and do the adults endeavour at the start of term three and have your own uh, intimate experience in the outdoors. So if you are interested in that, have a little bit of a think about it or a look at that one as well. Um, obviously, it's not a full adult, like it's not the full endeavour, it's the highlights, but it does involve freezing cold water, low ropes, probably a roast chicken and the Razorback um, up and over. Um, so there are many bonuses in there if you would like to take that on. Um, this weekend, shameless advertising, St. Phillips is sponsoring the three-hour mountain bike uh, event, the three hours of power. So it's lucky because a lot of people in this room have missed the last three separate hours of power over the last three weekends, I've noticed. Um, so you can do it all in one race that goes for three hours in the darkness from 7 p.m. till 7, uh, sorry, 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. this Saturday at the Telegraph Station. So um, be sure to jump in there. Um, juniors under eight, under 18s are free as long as they have gone through the appropriate process to make sure that they've got insurance. So there's a four-week free trial available. Um, it's often quite fun. People are going around in a circle, lapping around. People will always crash in the sand at the telegraph station. It's a good spectator sport if you want to come into the darkness at the telegraph station and just watch people sort of bite the sand as they're going across that. Once one person's gone headfirst into the sand, they create this large pit of death and multiple other people will have a stack in the sand. They usually walk away, but yeah, sand will be sticking to all of the sweat. Um, please jump in there quickly. And we are looking at question time. I think I might have